Good day, this is Global Watch on your digital first Pan-African network, TOS Television. I am Rua Panawo. The President of United States of America, Joe Biden, has assigned Vice President Kamala Harris to face an influx of migrants on the Mexican border. Delegating the assignment, Mr. Biden said he was giving a tough job to Harris, but not without believing that she was the most qualified person to do it. Subsequently, after Biden assumed office, the number of people arriving USA have reportedly grown. The migrants include hundreds of unaccompanied minors who are being held in immigration detention facilities. Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud has stood to oppose any interference in the internal affairs of other countries. Mohammed bin Salman disclosed this on Wednesday in a meeting with Chinese State Councillor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi. Mohammed maintained that Saudi Arabia is ready to join hands with China to uphold the goals and principles of the UN Charter and safeguard regional and global peace and stability. He also pledged comprehensive strategic partnership with China to continuously enhance bilateral cooperation in crude oil, petrochemical, nuclear energy and other energy fields and expand it into new fields such as 5G, telecommunication and digital technologies. The Chinese diplomat had also expressed China's unflinching support to Saudi to work together to promote peace, stability and development in the Middle East. North Korea has released two ballistic missiles on Japan, which is the first attempt since Biden assumed office. This came a few days after North Korea reportedly fired two non-ballistic missiles into the Yellow Sea. The U.S. Pacific Command, which monitors military forces in the Asia-Pacific region, has said on Thursday that it has highlighted the threat that North Korea's illicit weapons program poses to its neighbors and the international community. Politics in West Benegal so far has shown that BJP's Hindi-speaking heartlands in northern India is a dreadful place known for electoral violence that has reportedly killed many people. However, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has not relented in pushing hard to win power for the first time in West Bengal as the electoral process deepens. Meanwhile, reports have it that victory in the eastern state of 90 million people over one of Modi's most prominent openers would be a major achievement for his Hindu nationalist Barayitiya Janata Party two years after sweeping to a second term. A law that will ban pornography on smartphones and ta tablets in major city of United States has been moved. The governor of Utah on Wednesday announced a new law requiring an anti-pornography filter on smartphones and tablets sold in the conservative Mormon majority U.S. state. Speaking on the law, Republican Spencer Cox said he had signed it the night before and would penalize manufacturers failing to include the filter between $10 and $500 per violation. Now, according to reports, the law has been supported by conservative lawmakers in the western states, where members of the Mormon church make up two-thirds of the population. You are watching Global Watch. Coming up, stories on COVID-19. After the break, do stay tuned. In an effort to contain the spread of COVID-19, the European Union is set to examine ways to end its vaccine struggles at a summit on Thursday as COVID-19 death toll in Brazil hit 300,000. EU leaders are expected to meet through video conference to discuss AstraZeneca supplies, including the new vaccine export rules that will determine how needy countries are in terms of infection rates, how many jabs they have, and how readily they export doses to the bloc. As EU leaders are holding virtual talks to discuss vaccine supplies and improving distribution across the 27 nations, German Chancellor Angela Merkel has thumbs up the EU's decision to buy coronavirus vaccines jointly as the bloc struggles with delays in rollout. Pressure is mounting upon them to deliver after other countries like the UK achieve much faster vaccination. The European Commission is currently seeking added controls on vaccine exports, which would affect supply to the UK, where Prime Minister Boris Johnson has warned against imposing blockades. European Commission head Ursula von der Leyen had tweeted that the summit would ensure that Europeans get their fair share of vaccines.
China's government has further reiterated its readiness to increase the extra tax deduction on the R&D expenses of manufacturing firms in order to encourage and boost business innovation and advanced industrial upgrading. Li Keqing, who chaired State Council Executive Meeting, disclosed this on Wednesday. According to Li, the principal role of enterprises in making innovations can be better enhanced and more market-oriented. Equitable and inclusive support policies shall be employed to better motivate the business sector and other private actors to scale up their R&D spending and finally to help boost the momentum of economic growth and improve the economic structure. He added that the institutional arrangement is the largest in this year's structural tax courts and that boosting R&D imputes from the society with tax incentives and market-oriented means an effective way to stimulate technological innovation. A digital banking startup based in Atlanta, which is designed for black and Latino consumers, said on Thursday that it had raised $40 million from a host of U.S. financial institutions. Greenwood, that was created to provide online banking services to help close the world gap between black and Latino communities in the United States, is one of several digital banks that have emerged over the past year and is focused on consumers and businesses that have traditionally been undeserved by the mainstream financial sector. The Digital Bank, which was founded by entrepreneur Glover alongside civil rights leader Andrew J. Young and rapper and activist Michael Kilomike Randa, has signed up more than 500,000 users to its waitlist since being announced. President of Tokyo 2020 Olympics Organizing Committee Seiko Hashimoto had said that the Olympic flame would serve as a ray of light at the end of the darkness as the game's torch relay set off in Japan on Thursday amid widespread concerns over the unpredictable and mercurial nature of the COVID-19 infection. Tokyo 2020 organizers hoped this relay would shift the mood in favor of the Olympics in Japan but several touch bearers have dropped out, citing issues including health concerns about COVID-19 and scheduling conflicts. However, Japanese government has confirmed last week that spectators from overseas will not be allowed to attend the Games, making a major concession to the cold realities of the ongoing pandemic. The organizers said overseas buyers purchased 600,000 tickets to Olympic events, as well as 30,000 tickets to the Paralympic Games starting in August. Ukrainian national team stood against France during the qualifying campaign for the 2022 World Cup in Qatar. Despite the efforts put by the Barcelona star Antoine Griezmann to score a superb goal, the France were held to a 1-1 draw at home by Ukraine on Wednesday, which is a stumbling start for the world champion. The outcome of the game has since put the defending world champions on the back foot. And that is it on Global Watch today. For more updates, visit our website at www.tosvnetwork.com. Do follow us and like our social media handles on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And remember to subscribe on YouTube. I am Ruo Panawo. Good evening.